Oh, it's a good game. Oh, uh, welcome. Welcome very, very much to Conversation of this program. I got a friend here from a thousand years ago. We're friends from way, way back at the beginning of all things cable, I would say. And that's John Hammond. He had, for those who may can harken back sometime, he had the John Hammond fo uh, program. They used to start with his boot, and he was going like this. We didn't see him. We saw the boot going, and that was the John Hammond store that I remember. It was one right. of the pioneer programs here in cable television. And he's also a musician, and he's got a great story to tell. He's a good personal friend of mine from so long back that it's a great pleasure to welcome you to the conversation. Thank you very much, Harold. You're hanging Is out all over the world these oh days man, and everything. Yeah. But what I want to do with you is you brought your you brought your your machine, uh, you know the the organ or the uh, what do you call it keyboard. Yeah. And you can play a little bit for us, maybe toward the end and all that sure. because you do that. Happy to play for you. They're good. Time. That'd be great. But listen, sh share with us a little bit. Uh, we go way back. When did you? Uh, when that goes back to Coco Crystal time and all of that, right. uh, Jim Claddick and all that. But Absolutely. Share. Maybe, may, let's just go real quick. Where were you born and raised, and when did you get to New York, and we connected well, sort of in the beginning of cable television? Yeah, although I grew up out in the San Francisco Bay Area, I was born in Chicago, uh -huh. and we took the California Zephyr yeah. train, train out, yeah. out to Berkeley, California. That's a great and trip. And my father drove the Rambler across, and my mom and my sisters, we went on the train, you know. So, yeah. I mean, I was four years old. Oh, yeah, They yeah. said, we're going to go to another state, you know. Uh -huh. At four years old, you don't, you don't know, know what state the, is. Yeah, you know? right, right. But right. after we went through the corn patch mm. and over the mountains, you know, I started to get the idea. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my dad decided to take us out to California because Chicago, you know, was a tough town. Yeah, and, sure. And uh, yeah, he thought it would be a little better place to raise his family, and he had no idea what was about to take place I'll in be Berkeley, damned. California. Yeah. Oh, you went to Berkeley? Yeah, yeah. because yeah. it became yeah. the... Uh, that was like hippie time, the, uh, right? The political uh, epicenter of the, the world. Yeah, but and you were only four then. At the well, you know, I, I uh, started in on the music scene, and I uh, 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 was uh, involved in, in uh, protesting the Vietnam War. And yeah, and we all were. Politics yeah. at that time. Yeah, wasn't know, that a horror? Very, yeah. very young. And, yeah. uh, you know, I was I was a working musician by the time I was 11, you know. Yeah. What was the family like? What was your dad up to? What was the family? Was my dad warm, was, uh, friendly, uh, my good? My dad was a yeah. good man. He was a humanist. He was yeah. a, yeah, a medical good. doctor. You know? uh -huh. Medical doctor, he, yeah. He, he delivered over a thousand babies out Boy, in Berkeley, California. You get to know, you get to, you get yeah. to understand <laughs> what it's all about pretty after right. a thousand, yeah. So, but anyway, you know, it was very active times out there. There yeah. was a lot of music. Mm -hmm. There was live music in a lot of different places. And the music had a real <coughs> meaning then yeah. because so much was happening oh, God. that we were, we were really <coughs> wanting to stop that war, you know. It was and horrible, the war. I'm an old peace Nick like you. you yeah, know, yeah, from yeah. From way back, right, you know. Right, right, right. And we just want world peace, you know. Yeah, and, right. uh, you know, music is a uh, great... Uh, equalizer in many ways you know well, it was very big yeah. then well, you you were uh, you, forgive me for being a little bit out of sync with the chronology and everything but you were an adult at the time of uh, Woodstock well I was old enough to go there but I, I uh, was out on you the would West have been Coast a teenager or I went to the counterpart which was Altamont that you know, was a disaster yeah it, there was it violence wasn't, it wasn't a completely a disaster but a lot of hard lessons learned and yes there were uh, violence. There, were, there was death. Uh, a death there, uh, but from the Hell's Angels. Yeah, the Hell's Angels raised hell. And there was, yeah. uh, I believe, one baby was born there. You yeah, know? yeah and be. you know, it was one of the very first uh, uh, mass rock events, and people that didn't know that scientifically, you know, you needed to have X amount of uh, porta potties for the humans, you know. And uh, a medical squad to deal with uh, 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 overdoses of psychedelics that were going around. Well, and all these if, different if, things, if I know? if I may, that was Altamont was after Woodstock. Yeah. And Woodstock right. was the granddaddy Woodstock of went them down all. Pretty peacefully. No. You had wavy gravy there. You know, you know wavy gravy he was appeared. A good, uh, no, but the difference. Woodstock was small compared to Woodstock. I think it Woodstock. helped that it rained on everybody, you know. <laughs> Where, Woodstock? Yeah. No, no, it did a while, but no, Woodstock was there, and you had a gathering, and it was no 
publicity hardly at all. Right. It was just a thing got together and uh, word got around and Mr. Uh, all, uh, Rockefeller declared a disaster area. But there ended up being Woodstock. It was actually White Lake, 60 miles south of the town of Woodstock. But it was celebrating the contributions of Bobby Dylan. He was really brilliantly mm -hmm. br s informing the, the horrors of the time. And so he and Joan Baez and that. It went but, off relatively peacefully. But it was uh, going yeah. by word of mouth. It yeah. just was all over the world. And they just mm -hmm. came like uh, 600,000 yeah. people came to this area, mm -hmm. like a big bowl thing like this. So many, and there was no, uh, none of that worrying about this and that and everything like you were saying. It and was the innocent It times, just you know? happened. Yeah. It was like what they would call a happening. And it just, the food just appeared. The fences where they're going to, somebody's going to try and charge their mission, they all went down. Everybody just came in. It was a gigantic, gigantic party. That was before it the was party got spoiled, you know? It didn't get and, spoiled. Uh, it didn't get spoiled. No, it, it was, got, well, it rained it was a, one it day. It was a, Summer of Love, the magic time that it uh, was. It was a ma It was. It was in my way of thinking. These things don't just happen. I don't think right. they happen in time, mm -hmm. and that was a magic time. It was 1969. I don't know when Altamont was. Oh, it was a year or so after, I think. Altamont. Yeah, it, out in California. Maybe 69. You know. yeah, well, it was 69 was Woodstock. Yeah. But it was celebrating a thing, and just for the hell of it, it was a ma there was a major thing going on that is hardly recognized even. What the hell was it? It was anti-Vietnam, because that was there. Mm -hmm. But there was something more going on in the zeitgeist, or in the terms of the overall evolution of the whole uh, organic process on the planet. There was something major going on that was being right. sensed by the youth. The youth picked it up. The older people are there ensconced in the old ways. So it's not as that, but it was something new. And there was a feeling that was so strong and so far, far, far felt. And it was particularly deserved because there was something major going on in the zeitgeist at that time. And that is celebrated. And I do think in the fullness of time, for whatever it's worth, and I don't want to go into it anymore, but I think in the fullness of time, we celebrate this as the year 2013 or something, 2016, 17, uh, in the after Christ. So that would be uh, Christ was born. Okay, that was an event. I think in the fullness of time of our tenure on earth, I think it's going to be made a new year. It's going to be year one. 1970 is going to be seen as year one of a moment of qualitative evolutionary transformation that was taking place, mm -hmm. all unknown. It is all done by artists and so forth and sense it. But it was a major moment it was beyond a time. just a party. It was it very was, spontaneous, you know. It was like, spontaneous. Uh, it just happened. Country it was, Joe got up there. He did the... Uh, well, no, I was sitting there. I was sitting there. We all went there. We Richie had a, Havens, you know. Richie Havens yeah. was my dear, dear, yeah. dear, 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 dear friend. We yeah. were very close friends all until the time he passed. And there's 600,000 people there. And I told you, we were there and we had a big... We had a, uh, like a commune that we were in. My wife and my kids and all that. It was wonderful. We had. We went from New Paltz. So I was there. And we went, and he had, one of the guys, they had brought a big weather, weather balloon, eight feet in diameter weather balloon, and he filled it with helium, and they, we tethered it to the ground so that the people from the town of Woodstock, that was Bobby Dillon, uh -huh. the, the contribution of Bob Dillon was being recognized then. That was the meeting point. That, well, no, that was the time in, when, when there was By the this, balloon. Yeah, no, the meeting, no, that was, yeah, we... We were from New Paltz. That's a sister community to Rosendale, me, you, uh, Woodstock, and New Paltz was a sort of triangle. And they had had to move it down to White Lake because they couldn't get it in Woodstock and everything. But anyway, they did. So he brought, and my fr the guy was one of the gang, he put an eight-foot weather balloon tethered to the top in order to mark where the people from Woodstock and New Paltz would know where to gather. Mm -hmm. Among 600,000, 600, there's a lot wow. of people. Yeah, right. It was really something, it was a major event. And it wasn't just yeah, sex, the drugs, the and rock and roll. The roads weren't uh, able to handle oh, they the declared it. Of, a, they declared people it, just left their cars yeah, on the street. Yeah, right. You know? They declared it as that. And Mr. Yeah. they said, <laughs> what the hell is this? And everybody was taken by surprise. It was just something right. felt by youth. It and it was particularly largely you uh, improvised and uh, spontaneous. Yeah, it was spontaneous, and it, and it came know. off almost without a hitch. Right. 
you know. And it was the food appeared, thing. and this happened, and people were swimming. And, and it as history is written, mm -hmm. it was all good. I know? think it's going to yeah. be. It's, I think in the fullness of time, yeah. 1970 is likely to be it's distinguished as year one. Although you know, the, the rest of history will be Alta, celebrated Alta from Mont that had, time. Altamont, as history is written, was not well. cool. But you know what? I was there. And there was a lot of good things that happened. Well, there. I probably, yeah, I suppose and, so. And uh, we weren't really aware that uh, uh, we knew that there was some violence going down, but there, like you said, there were so many. Yeah, hell's of angels of there. Yeah, yeah. That we couldn't know that what was really going down, except when the Rolling Stones came out. Yeah. And it was becoming dark, mm -hmm. and the, the, the disturbance happened at the uh, front of the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. The stones had to stop, yeah. and Mick Jagger was trying to yeah, calm yeah, the people. Yeah, he tried to know? calm them down. Yeah. So at that point, we knew. Yeah, it had gotten over the top. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the but thing. But before that, that mm. it was a good party. You know, I actually mm. ran into a lot of friends. Yeah. Oh there. well, there was a there was a lot of uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll going it's on. It's amazing. At that you time know, when everything. you're in a group of hundreds of thousands of people, yeah, and you're walking along, and you run into actual friends. Yeah, members, right, you know? right. You go, wow. You know, it's similar to like when you're in Times Square. Yeah, right. I always run into friends of mine. Yeah, Times Square, yeah, you yeah. Know? Well, that's you partly theater. And some of them I've seen, I just saw them recently, like I was in Shanghai yeah. and uh, played Ran with a saxophone player, and uh, <coughs> a couple of weeks later I'm in Times Square and I see him over there, and uh, he didn't see me. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort of used to spotting people in yeah, Times yeah, Square. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Amongst uh, all those people, it's just amazing. I, I love going I through Times Square. I walk up to people and I, I, uh, I, when I see them in Times Square and I say, uh, you come to New York and you don't even call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's an old line. That's and a line. And they look and they say, yeah. Hammond, what's yeah, happening? Yeah, you know? right, right. I didn't see you. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so we got here and there. So we, let's talk. We were in television. Yeah. We were at Manhattan Network. And this, yeah. is, this is a tribute to George Stoney more than any other person. Right, public access But this TV, public access yeah, thing yeah. exists. And this is set. And then you got about 4,000 of these across the country. This still exists as a place for people to make me and what the thing is for the producers that can make media a multimedia it made it possible for a place where you could make multimedia and not have to think about money right now the whole world is you can't do anything and not unless restricted by uh, you know the seven words and what are uh, the seven words <laughs> well you know uh, oh oh yeah. seven dirty words yeah right I don't know? remember that George Carlin did a whole oh thing George Carlin <laughs> wasn't he great he was, the best, he yeah. was just so well, you know, good man we, we're supposed to be able God to exercise bless our freedom on public access and yeah that's what it's all about well yeah you know? but yeah but it was also yeah. a way in which it was financed in a way and it was done by cooperative so you didn't have to be thinking about money right because Money is the thing that, uh, and we're going to have to get to a point where the humanity writ large, as hard as this is to understand, because it's all degenerated back to where that's the single most important thing that motivates human society is money. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to get to be where people aren't even going to have to think about money because there's going to be enough for all, which is dawning. And that was being tr that was being signaled in the thing of Woodstock, the 1970. We were making a major transformation in the evolutionary yeah. process. If people could share a little bit more, it would be cool. No, know? no, the <laughs> collective capability yeah. of providing right. everything in a material sense was growing to where the greater numbers of <coughs> <coughs> greater population of the people of the world, we've got 7 billion now, we're heading for 10, we got that, all of that, and we've been there 200,000 years, 10,000 generations, and it's getting to be where there's going to be enough for all. Mm -hmm. And the idea that there is scarcity, which all our institutions are based on, is something that we're going to be overcoming. But it's been a hard fight. Yeah. But that's when we crossed the line where collectively ontology is that it was capable to us for the first time in 200,000 years when we were transcending scarcity. Now that's something people can't even get in their head because that's the only thing that motivates most human behavior and well, institutions. Well, hopefully uh, there won't be starving people. And nothing, uh, nothing. No, there will be enough for all. People without medical. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, all of that. That yeah. sort of thing, you know. So, yeah. But we're fortunate to be living in this time, even though where there's a lot of challenges right now. And uh, it just seems like there's been one natural disaster after another uh, since... Uh, 
No, well, in the immediate, you're talking started, in the immediate, you know? and, you're talking uh, in the immediate sense with the hurricane. You know, we're all like survivors, that. and uh, the, you know, for me, the music sort of keeps me going, you know. And I yeah, mean, okay, yeah. Well, I'm sorry, you know, I'm rambling on well, and on what, about, what, what the, about the old good old what, days. What I've been doing yeah. lately is because the uh, venues have been disappearing. You yeah, know? you you're playing you know? professionally and well, stuff. Yeah. I'm doing a lot of gigs inside of hospitals, assisted living, skilled nursing places. You uh huh. Know? Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's good. People who can't go out, you know, mm -hmm. we bring the music into them. You yeah. Know? Uh -huh. And uh, I find that uh, if you give them the full power, you mm -hmm. know. What does that mean? Uh, instead of just coming in and, uh, and giving, giving, them, uh, a little lamb. giving them half power, you yeah. know, you give them the, give them the juice. Kick out the jams, didn't the they used to say? Yeah. You know? Kick out the jams. Yeah. 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 You know, it, it, to me, it's like, it's. The same whether I play for five people or five thousand people. Yeah. You, know, uh -huh. you, you got to give what you got, and uh, if they pick up on that uh, energy and the groove of the music, yeah, it's it's uh, it somewhat uh, uh, medicinal. In yeah, a certain absolutely, way, you know? no doubt, no doubt. You it's know, great. and there's nothing scientific about it. You know, there's there's there are some people who th who try to say it is yeah and they go around with a card you know that says they have a degree in medical uh, yeah right, right, in, right, in, uh, right. music therapy yeah you know? right right you know but uh, some people got it and some people don't yeah you know? right yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, I've been doing it for a long time and uh, it seems to have a positive effect on the people that yeah God bless you, you really know, yeah it's just you know it's just another activity you know mm. you know you could do, be doing you know arts and crafts or yeah. Uh, watching a movie or something, but music is the great equalizer. That well, I, I at, think you're you know? something that must be said yeah. for that. And in case you didn't wonder, I see we can tell by what we can maybe cast over if we can. Can we cast over to the set? Over to the, over our left, over his left yeah, shoulder? I, br I brought the organ that I he's, play in the hospitals. He, with, she's with, brought know? the organ. Let's see if we can just take yeah. a look at it. You, you, you want to? Yeah, take a look at it yeah, quick. Is, he's gonna, a, it, he's going to amble he, over there in a little while and play something from it. So it that goes, looks it like a, that's a serious case. machine. Yeah. That's a serious this, uh, smaller all piece the time, machine. You know? Yeah, uh -huh. I used to have one that weighed four hundred and twenty-five pounds. You know? Really? Yeah. How did you handle and, uh, that? You have an elephant well, to carry you know, it around. To play the organ, you have to be more than a musician. You yeah. got to be a social organizer. You know? <laughs> yeah, really. Oh. <laughs> because you have to have people to help you lift yeah. it up onto the bandstand. Yeah. How did you get and, involved um, in that? Why couldn't you have played the like well, uh, my harmonica? Well, used to always tell me. If you uh, played the harmonica, she it would used be to easy. Ask me, why didn't I play the violin? Oh, you know? violin <laughs> even. Right. Yeah. I would have said harmonica. You know? Yeah. But actually, put I, it in your back I started pocket, out like playing every accordion. boy in when, Kansas. Maybe next time I'll bring my accordion down. Yeah, there, yeah, you know? right, right, right. But I, I play the accordion. The problem with the accordion is that a very fine accordion is very fragile. Is that true? And yeah. when you go through the airport, the baggage handlers, even if you put it in a, a real, real road case, the stronger the case is, the more they throw the case. Is that uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. they're hand built. You yeah. Know? And a, a real fine accordion is built in Italy. Yeah. The best ones are made in Italy. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. And if you uh, damage them, there's yeah. very few people that can fix them today. Uh, you know? uh, there's just a few. Uh, is that true? Craftsmanship yeah. like thing, right? They're the last of the dinosaurs. What know? about the idea that everything's going cyber, everything's going computer? You got all these kind of things that are coming out of the cyber. Uh, uh, and now we're on the verge of getting into robotics and things like yeah. that. But the cyber thing. It goes thing, full circle sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know? But it is it changing back. the music and everything like that? Oh, I mean, you used to have a you know, banjo. Like and I was telling you before, like a lot of the kids today, they do uh, music that's put together from recordings of other people's music. They mash it together. It's called sampling? Yeah, well, they, they take samples of drum beats, yeah. you know, uh -huh. and uh, that sort of thing. And a lot of a lot of the reason why is, besides the fact that the technology is available to do that now. Yeah, it's coming exponentially, it, yeah. A lot of these kids didn't have an instrument in the yeah. first place. Yeah, right. So if they, if they would put music back into the schools mm -hmm. and put instruments in the hands of these young kids and they learn how to play their own music, uh -huh. and then they wouldn't have to take these samples, they'd make their own samples. You yeah. Know?
Well, you're more yeah. familiar with the music thing than than I am and everything. But I remember I remember that foot of yours. Yeah. And people will remember that. Well, the reason, early cable. The reason why I it was came always up with, looking with, forward with, to the John the reason, Hammond yeah, show. First yeah. First of all, I had really nice Italian boots. Oh, know? that was good. And, Maybe, and is that what you you were showing yeah. off the boots? Was yeah. that why you had that start? Uh, se second of all, never saw his face. I really didn't it was only saw on the TV. boot, and but I said it's going to be yeah. good. The reason you know? I came up with that. They knew how to make music then. Right. The reason why I came up with that gimmick. It yeah. was a gimmick. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, it was because I, I really wanted to be on the radio. Is that and right? And I couldn't get a radio show when I found out about Why would you want to be on radio more than television? Because I'm a radio guy. You You're know? a radio <laughs> guy. What does that mean? Tell me. What do well, you think? That's a I started listening to music seriously uh, with a crystal radio. radio when okay. I was five years Did old. Did you make you your know? own Heath kit? Did I, you built a, I built a few radios. Did, yeah. did you build yeah, a Heath sure. kit? Uh, yeah, my dad had Heath kits going all the time. Does anybody and, know uh, what a Heath kit is? Yeah. Does anybody in and the audience to know? Solder, I, burnt no. the, I burnt the hell out of my fingers on a soldering gun. Oh, you know, God. So. They but used to have a thing where you could go to Sears and buy a radio. Yeah. Wait I'm a originally a radio guy, you know. Radio is where I wanted to be on the radio. That was before there was and any television. You didn't have any choice. It's still very difficult to get on the radio. So when I heard about public access, I was thinking, this is a way that we could do a radio program with visuals, and the audio quality's got to be good because mm -hmm. it comes over a cable. Uh -huh. you know? So that it was, was your a way thinking. to get our music out over a cable with very high quality. Sometimes, in a way, it was too high quality because uh, people would get it directly from the cable, and then why should they buy your records? They they could make a, a recording that's professional quality uh -huh, right off uh -huh. the cable. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Now you can make it with yeah. a little cell phone. But, you know, when we started, uh, yeah. you've been on longer than me, Harold. But I've, I've been, been on, on since the beginning yeah, of time. I've been, I've been on for 34 years. I'm on the same time I've always been on at 1.30 in the morning. I'm Friday, on Manhattan Cable. Friday nights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm still on every week, you know. Mm -hmm. And now I can send my show in uh, magically over... Uh, the internet yeah, from right, anywhere yeah. in the world. Yeah, know? right, right, right. The problem is that so many people are now watching YouTube and they're watching, you know, the hundreds of channels that, you know, when we started out, there wasn't even numbers on the dial. I know, yeah. It was just yeah. A, B, C, ABC, D, yeah, right, 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 right. right so yeah. now there's so many choices. That, so the, the real challenge in public access TV today is to drive your audience to watch your show on public access TV. Mm -hmm. And if you can keep them there, you're really accomplishing something. But you have a following, you know. You've been doing your show for so long. I've been doing it since the Pleistocene, I think. Uh, right. I, I, I like Joe to, Franklin I, said, yeah. you've been doing the show so Franklin, long. Joe Franklin, what a when, great guy. When yeah. you had M Moses on the show, you told him to take <laughs> two tablets. <laughs> something right? like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the other one fell, yeah, right. Yeah. No, it's yeah, but it's like that. But uh, but then it, and then that's all going faster. And that whole information, it's all electronics and everything right. that are going. And we're going through a major quality. Now everybody has has the ability. The smartphone with yeah. their phones that you can stream MNN TV right yeah. onto your mobile device. It's yeah, really right. fantastic. Yeah, and it's know. it's only getting more all yeah. the time. And with the headphones, it sounds just as good as yeah, if right, you're and and high definition right. and all that. Yeah, because it's all. <laughs> It's all going uh, exponential. Now it's so it's still, it's still powerful. It's still very powerful. But we used to be right there on the dial with CNN, ABC, NBC, CBS. Channel 16, yeah. wasn't it? Channel well, was, uh, was 16 was what happened. And you know who else was? C uh, and D. Florence Rice was an early one. Remember yeah, Florence? C, it used to be She's C still around. C still kicking 90 then, years, yes, 94. Channel C became 16. That's so, what it was. Right, yeah, right, I, you yeah. get confused in it all. But that's a specific to this and everything but like that. I'm glad you're still doing it. It's a big honor to be on your show. But well, I you're uh, doing it. It's going. It's going and everything. I, yeah, and I believe in it. I have done some political stuff and all that and everything. But I am of this and opinion. You're a world traveler, you know. Well, not much. Right I got a little bit of done, a little traveling. I haven't traveled much. Mostly it's been in New York. But I got. Uh, I was really upset with um, the political thing when they. Uh, I think uh, Muammar Gaddafi was ahead of history's curve. Mm. in terms of the way the United States was ahead of the history's curve out of feudalism in Europe. We came out of Europe for four for a thousand years after Rome, right. and it was all done with kings, and we had certain... So you went over there with Steve Bell. 
right? Yes, yeah, Steve went a couple <laughs> times with me there. Stephen Bell was a friend. He, we did a thing with um, Jane Roberts for people that are into the spiritual stuff wow. and everything. And we, she became a friend of mine, but we, we did. But anyway, it's just that the implications of what's going on, it's going into robotics now. Mm -hmm. It's going into robotics, and it's really threatening the uh, undergirding of our society, which again, to come back to it, the major thing that motivates the human condition is money. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get to be where money's not going to mm -hmm. matter, because everybody's going to have what they need or reasonably want. We're transcending scarcity yeah. and scarcity has been the reality in which all of human history evolved yeah. so you always have to have that so you get out of the thing where you have to be involved with the money thing and then you can be into creative that gets in the way the right. whole marketing of things gets in the way of the creative uh, expression. it certainly does you know yeah and, i uh, think it does yeah that's why i think that that sort of they got a little window away from it from woodstock Nobody was the wind. The, the the fences come down. Everything came down. There well, was sharing and between everything. Between you and mm. the, your community community of people mm. around Harold and and uh, myself and my friends, you know, we're all trying to keep that old spirit alive. Well, I'm not, today, I'm trying to I'm trying know, to find a new and go thing. Go into the future. I'm not because, trying uh, to keep the old it, alive. It gets I'm more more challenging mm. because the cost well, no, of everything is so high now. Yeah. Well, know? yes, that's the trouble because they don't have they don't have an economic system that can handle surplus. You used to be able to feed the whole band for five bucks. You know? Well, those are <laughs> good old days. Yeah, that was it. But anyway, I go back into the way way back. But I'm glad to hear that you're 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 doing some good work and everything like that. And uh, the times are, I don't want to get off on my thing, but uh, it's so good and it's been a good, a g grand uh, session. And you're, you're going quite a bit to Europe now, right? I, every, every year I go at least once or twice. And um, I lived over there for the better part of six years. You yeah, know? yeah. And you're in New so York. I've 32 years in a row I've been going to play in Germany. Yeah. Primarily over there and in Paris. I lived in Paris for a year. Yeah, you got that a whole... That was actually my first destination. I went to Paris yeah. on the Concorde jet. You know? Did you yeah. really? That was about six hours only or yeah, something. Three hours and 26 Three hours. Minutes. It was half that. Yeah. Uh, right, half the trip. Yeah. Right. That was yeah. my first trip to Europe in That's a biggie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Con I'd forgotten that. Was I amazing. stayed in Paris for 56 days, and I fell in love with that scene over there, and I thought that someday I would come to live there, and I did 10 years later. But you before I lived in Paris, I lived in Frankfurt, Germany. Yeah. And so I you like that too, years. right? I love yeah. Frankfurt. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I have yeah. a lot of friends there. And one of the main reasons I go to Frankfurt every year, yeah. because we have a trade show for music instruments there. Is that right? Instruments? Yeah, it's called yeah. the Musique Messe. Uh huh. And yeah. it's the sister show to a show called the NAM Show. Uh, and it's uh, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. All the manufacturers and yeah. the uh, retailers, the wholesalers, uh -huh. and the players, they come there. Yeah. And this way, when new instruments come out or old instruments, you know, some of these companies have been in business for a long time. Yeah, you know? yeah. Petrov yeah. Pianos from mm. Czech Republic, you know, they've been over 100 years. Steinway, they've been around the block for a long time. And yeah. Then, then you have, uh, you know, the rock instrument manufacturers like yeah. Fender, Gibson. And These are all names I don't yeah, know, you know. So but do you read? Do you read? Do you read music? I can read music. I yeah, went to music school. Schism. I went. To, I, I had lessons. I went to music school, but uh, I wasn't the greatest student. But actually, believe it or not, I'm still playing with yeah. some of my teachers. We play together. Todd Anderson, the great tenor player, who was my arranging and composition. Tenor team. what? Tenor sax. Tenor saxophone. Saxophone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and Todd and I we played together just or recently. Or Nick Coleman. I, I, I actually brought a, a clip. Oh, good. With, okay, uh, yeah, good. With good, Todd yeah. playing. He was my teacher, and, and yeah. we, we just played together recently. Uh -huh. And then I have musicians that I work with every time I go to Europe. Uh -huh. And very sadly, we recently lost our dear friend, a uh, beautiful saxophone player. named uh, His name is Lutz Buchner. Uh -huh. And he was only 47 years That's old. That's too young by yeah. far. Yeah. And I uh, played with Lutz for 22 years. Uh -huh. know, really? You know. oh. yeah. I'm sorry you lost a friend yeah, like that. It's yeah. a, uh, still very deep. A friend and a comrade when you play. Yeah. It, it really I'm is really a thing that brings people together, don't yeah, you think? We yeah, we really yeah. didn't yeah. expect to, you know, thank God that we had so great times together. But yeah. He, he, he died suddenly very young. And he left a 12-year-old son behind and his uh -huh. wife. And yeah. uh, 
you know, all the musicians love this cat. Yeah, you know? right. So I brought a clip with him on it. Yeah, okay. And, and listen, uh, well, we, well, yeah. one of the problems is you're too damned interesting. You should <laughs> slow down. <laughs> and also, yeah. um, we're going hey, to we're limited time to time. To, to no, no, anything. no, no, no. We're going to have right, to do yeah. that because uh, well, you've got a couple of clips and we're going to play yeah. some of them. And uh, our our producer is going to play some of it. And they're longer, the first and she's going to do first it a one few has, minutes. Has uh, Lutz on the saxophone, and uh, the other horn players are a part of a big band called the NDR Big Band, which is the uh, German equivalent to BBC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're just going to play a little clip. She'll t she'll d play three this or four minutes. This is a club that we play over in Hamburg, Germany. And I think we have another one after yeah. that. But okay, can we run that now then, perhaps, jo Josie, and run the clip. And, um, okay, here we go, yeah. There's Lutz in the center. Oh, that's him, yeah, yeah. okay. And the other saxophonist, he went to North Texas University mm -hmm. and the trumpet player, and that's Joe Berger, you know Joe, the guitar player. Yeah, I do, yeah. I recognize, yeah. And yeah. that's the same instrument that th take it over to Germany, you know. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So we're gonna hit it, we only had a few minutes to play here, mm. so we're gonna, jam a lot of music in a few minutes. Uh, Here we wait. go. This is at the end of that. We had to Where stop. Where is this? Where's the this physical is location? Ham Hamburg, Hamburg Germany. Germany. Yeah, okay. In the north. Uh huh. Yeah, Hamburg's up on the, yeah, up north. We had eight minutes. Exactly eight minutes. So, you know. We can't do a whole eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to play the whole eight minutes. She'll just cut it out at a certain point. The neighbors, you know, they've been very cool to let us have live music here. Once again, give it up for Torsten and Frank for keeping the live music here. That's the my Oscar friend, Carr, the best. Yeah. Knew you, beautiful yeah. guy. You know? Yeah. I have a lot of friends over there. I'll bet you do, yeah. yeah. Glad to hear you kicking it. Yeah, that's great. Okay, we're going to do a thing called Cooking at the Ouster Bar. Outer That's bar. the name of the place, the Ouster Bar. Oyster Bar. Yeah. Ouster Bar. Yeah, Ouster, yeah, Ouster actually means oyster. You you know? did, yeah, oh, right, uh, right, right. See, they're actually reading the charts, Harold. Look at this. These yeah. cats are some schooled musicians, Harold. They're, they're legit cats. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they can read a score. Yeah, right. Mm. All right. Come on, music, music, okay, music, 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 music. Okay. Enough talk. Play! This is Woodstock, waiting for Richie yeah. Haven to kick it off. Yeah. Michael Leuschner, beautiful cat. Fiete Fels. German. Yeah. Yeah. 
Burgermeister. <laughs> There you go, now we're going, now you're going. Yeah. It's great when you hit it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you get the idea. You get the idea. Uh, yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. That's it. It's great when you hit it, isn't yeah, it? Man. You all get, you get in. That's really good. And we have yeah. blast. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. You know? just pick it up and wail, too. wail. Yeah. yeah. That's called synergy. Yeah. Right. That's like when you and get it. And the audience it, is and, fantastic too. Yeah, you know, yeah. They, they, uh, you think they're better off? They're they're appreciating jazz and whatnot over in Europe better you know? than here. And uh, the thing uh, is, what are the venues well, around the here anymore? In Europe. In America. In Europe, even the people who are not jazz. People yeah. they know about jazz because yeah. they're interested in all the music and they know who the different musicians are a little bit more about the history. Here you're either into jazz or you hate jazz, you know. <laughs> so yeah. you know, and uh, there's a lot of different types of jazz. You know, yeah. there's free jazz and there's the funky jazz and uh, uh, smooth jazz and all that stuff. You know. Yeah. Somebody but, uh, once said when Pershing went to Europe, he did about two things: Jim Crow. And jazz. <laughs> they brought the two things to uh, Europe, you yeah, know, well like that. Yeah, well, it used to be bigger in this yeah. country, but this is one of our exports. And uh, yeah, it's coming out of the Delta. Enough, it's all it's coming out of the Delta. It's yeah. more uh, jazz and blues is more. And a lot of it's coming out of the black community. That's Absolutely. where it mostly happened. You Absolutely. know, was there. Yeah. yeah, which is a lot to be said for. Uh, you know, a lot of problems to be dealt with in that area. But we don't right. go into that kind of thing and everything. Got another clip we might show in a minute or two and everything. But you're doing jazz and so forth, by and large. Yeah, I get pigeonholed into the jazz thing, although I came out of the rock world, you know? Yeah. I used to have hair all the way down, you, you know? Did. I, oh, yeah, yeah, you did. Let me see. No, you I, don't. No. I, I still got you're hair up there, to look, you know? You're beginning to look like a, <laughs> he's beginning to look like a banker. You're beginning to look like <laughs> a, a Wall Street banker. Oh, yeah, I hate to tell I you. I get the more yeah. legit I look. I you know? guess that's yeah. what happens. Yeah, right. But right. we're still old freaks, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, yeah, that was a good, yeah, right. There were good times. I try to keep God the old spirit. Yeah, God bless the music. Yeah, I used to dance my head off to Yellow Man. I loved Yellow Man. Bar, 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 bre reggae. One thing about reggae music, is great. It doesn't matter what country you go to. An E flat is the same E flat here as it is in China. That's and right. Everywhere, you know. That's that's really yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, unlike language, because even, of that, yeah. when I bring my music over, yeah, I yeah. have written charts. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And w I'm able to play with musicians that we can't even sit down at dinner. That and notional have a system you know? only came in about what 17, uh, 1600 or something, or nineteen. Yeah, that was a little before my time. Yeah. But, uh, like we don't know what the, the music. No, no thing, notation came in good with thing that. that they have that because it, it makes it possible for musicians of all languages to play together. You want to hear a quick story yeah. on that? The no, we, could, we don't know what Caesar heard. We have no way. There was no notional system to b take music down, you right. know, like that. And the, the Beethoven was pretty good. Mm -hmm. And he, he c made a composition that was uh, very good, right? He made a composition he played. And they could play it. And then what happened is the piano at the time to play it on was limited, but the score he put down notionally, okay? Uh -huh. And the pianos improve in quality of what they can get to, more nuanced kind of thing like that. Mm -hmm. And by the time, it was like sometimes later, maybe after he died, finally it got down to where they had a piano that could really get into the score the way he put it down, and it picked up all the nuance. Uh -huh. You understand? Yeah, right. The progress of the, the equipment caught up with the score. You it's understand a, what I'm saying? A There's a metaphor in there for the human condition. It's a very complex condition. mechanism that 
yeah. the piano itself, you know. Yeah, right, right, right. But this organ Yeah, here talk to it. It is uh, this is a really beautiful instrument. Yeah, it, it, I uh, bet, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, should uh Second show? You want to play a little bit? Yeah, sure. This is uh, uh the teacher I was telling you about, yeah. Todd Anderson. Yeah, okay, opponent. yeah. Yeah, get yeah, uh, get his clip in. We just recently did this a couple of weeks ago <laughs> in our building. Okay. And that's my my theme song, Late Rent, you know. Late Rent. Yeah. <laughs> because I paid for the recording session with the rent money. Mm. And we recorded it on a Nakamichi cassette deck. Oh, okay. 2 weeks ago. Oh, wow. And this is my big organ. This is a real Hammond B3 organ. Okay, right. Boy, you're really getting more yeah, and more equipped. Yeah, 425 pounds. Wow. Yeah, I couldn't bring it today. Are you picking up our sound as well as this? Yeah? Okay, let's listen, yeah? Okay. Are you going to get some music yeah. here? Yeah, and these, these guys I've been playing with for years, you know. Like I told you, Todd was my teacher. Yeah. And uh, some of these guys are on my first album. Yeah, okay. Recognize that too? Right, that's really good. That gets that rhythm is really gets going. That's the trouble, the yeah. trouble is, you play too damn good. You <laughs> should slow down a little bit, you know, because you straight. But the thing is, you brought your feet. You've yeah. got your your I try to your put the hamburger on the grill. What do you call an organ? You call it's it a Hammond a, organ. No, no, no. They have another word for it or something. Well, it's a keyboard. Yeah. No, but they got a slang word for that or for the keyboard. Uh, you know, they have, or is it for the keys? Guitar? No, no, no. I forget. <laughs> I forget. There's a slang word. Uh, you're your your axe. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, that's like yeah. a guitar. That's a guitar. Yeah, an right? axe can be any instrument. But no, this is, is, it, is that true? Anything? Yeah, this is one of my axes, and the other is accordion. Well, Next one time I'll bring my accordion. Yeah, yeah. You, you, oh, you do accordion. Oh, hell yeah. You and Lawrence Welk. <laughs> I play a little different than Lawrence. I think, you know? yeah, considerably yeah. so. But anyway, the problem is, the hell of it is, is uh, you're too damned interesting. You should slow down. <laughs> and uh, you're too interesting and everything. And we want to get you a chance to uh, demonstrate a little bit of the organ, if you can. Yeah, I'd you know? to play a little bit for you. you know, yeah. I have to play very soft in here because... The yeah. editors are. Now, are you going to keep the mic on, yeah. or are you just going to talk over no, it? Or you're you going to take it off yeah. and just let the music speak yeah. for itself? Um, can he, can you hear him at all when he talks? I'm, I'm going to play a little tune for you. I'll hold this up in the air yeah, so you can you can talk loud okay. if you want a little bit. I just want to tell you before I go over to the organ yeah. that uh, I selected a, uh, one of my original compositions that's uh, on the soft side, you know, and I, I 
wrote this when I went to Paris the first time in 1981. And I met a very sad... Is it a love song? I met it's a, a lady. I bet you there's a lady coming. Yes, yeah, not right. really... Uh, Thank God for the not lady. Not really a love story. It's just some sad lady that I met in a oh, cafe. You know? uh, Her name was Lydia. She was Lydia. very sad. She didn't want to talk, but after a while she did talk. Uh -huh. And it turned out that even though she said she couldn't speak English, it turned out she could speak fluently in five languages, mm -hmm. inclu including mm -hmm. English. You know? I once met a person who yeah. could speak in 24 languages. Really? Well, anyway, 24, I how wrote, the hell? There's 7,000 of them to try and keep track of. on a little keyboard back in my hotel room. Oh, yeah? And it went on my first album. I'm going to play it. God, it's just make, it you make a it movie. It could be a movie. <laughs> Candles and things yeah, and really. wine bottles and all kinds of things. So anyway, John Hammond. I gotta keep, I gotta and he's going to be playing on the keyboard. i got to keep the, the sound yeah. down here, folks. Yeah, keep the but sound this down. Is, um, this is a tune called Lydia's Tune, and it goes like this. Lydia. <laughs> You composed that? Yeah, like that, yeah. You composed it. 
Yeah. How many have you got under your belt now? How oh, many? Yeah. Maybe, maybe about a hundred. A hundred, hundred different yeah, things, yeah. Like that, you know? And it keeps coming. I know a lot of standards. How do you go about it? Do you have a thing in your head that comes out? Uh, you're driving down the road and you get a certain I'll idea. Tell you, it, it or how do you guys leave, come up with that least stuff? Least expect it. If yeah. you sit down and you think you're, I'm going to write a tune now, that's when it won't come. You know? Is that true? Yeah? yeah. You can't just do it like you that. It just has to come from uh, experience and. You can't just program uh, it. Life yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. It just comes out. Yeah. 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 It's really yeah. something. Yeah. But the nature of this instrument is sort of a blues. Uh, it's very bluesy, jazzy. You know. Yeah, mm. and of course, people use the the uh, organ in churches and classical music. Right. But I'm uh, not a classically trained musician, uh -huh, uh -huh, so I naturally uh -huh. took it into the way of jazz. You know. Blues, yeah. You know? Yeah. But you heard like Jimmy Smith. You know. Mm. Jimmy Smith was the guy that took it into the jazz world. You know. But when they originally designed the Hammond organ, it wasn't designed as a as a jazz. Yeah, instrument. Hammond is a is that a name of a person or uh, is that well, a name yeah, of a it company? It was a, a man named Lawrence Hammond. No, yeah. No. Uh, Hammond organ. Yeah. But he he invented the tickless clock. You know. The what tick? The tickless clock. Tickless. Tick. Yeah. The, uh, you mean it electric, doesn't yeah. tick tick tick? It didn't tick. It was a sweep second hand uh, uh, electric. Oh, and it was and the motor yeah. that drove that clock is what drove the. Um, electromechanical tone wheels in the first Hammond organ, which is the sound that this organ emulates. Wow, it's yeah. amazing, right? Yeah. So what, what about the big organs that you play in the big cathedrals and things like that? And yeah, everything? well, the, the organ that you saw me on that last clip, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that's a Hammond B3. I don't know and what a number is. It actually has yeah. mechanical tone wheels running yeah. around inside there. I always make a joke, I say, that there's little chipmunks running around. And <laughs> and the, the harder I press on yeah, the keys, the yeah. faster they run around. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right. Now, music's yeah. wonderful, isn't it? But do you do? Yeah. Cl are you into classical or other yeah, forms of music? Yeah. Telling you, I'm not a classically trained cat. Not know? classically trained, so, but uh, do you like all forms yeah, of music? I, I, I think Bach. I like all I always music. Liked Bach, you know? Yeah, Everybody you like Bach. Bach. It's very intellectual. Yeah. yeah. Very but, structured, uh, yeah. You know, I really, I didn't really listen to too many other people except the music in my head. You know. What about what about in popular veins and that? You know, who you, you Hendrix well, or? Of course, I like or Stevie Wonder. Everybody Stevie loves Wonder, Stevie yeah, Wonder. Ray right. Charles, you know. Yeah, right. Aretha Franklin, you know, yeah. can't go wrong there. And the Beatles, of course. The know. Beatles were something yeah, else. Yeah, the Beatles changed everything. So what's happening with music now? Do you think? Like music, uh, is it true that the young are the ones who come to the new music new? If you're looking for something new Do in I terms need to of music, clipped in here? oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want, that was great, man. Thank you. More, well, yeah, I th we, the trouble is, it's the tyranny of time. Of time. We're running Turn out of time. Of time. Yeah. You see, we only got yeah. six minutes. I play on, on yeah. all day and night for you. Harry. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's so good yeah. to see you again, yeah. you know, and everything. This is a very a big honor to be here at MNN TV. I never get to do my show uh, in the studio. You know, I always oh. send it in from. Someplace on the dusty trail. Yeah. You know? Okay. Well, that's good. But you're still here in New York. You got your base. Your yeah, base here in New York. Here you're still uh, living here. Yeah. I've been here. You get around a lot. Though, I've been yeah. living in New York since 1976. Boy, long time. Yeah. 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 You like New York? Love New York. I love New York. Dear, How can dear. you be in New York? Yeah. 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 Well, I know it's really something else, yeah. you know, and everything. So, um, uh, so are you? Are you? Are you composing now? I I don't know how that happens. Yeah. Uh, you know, you go through certain fertile times you know yeah. when the music is just coming out right and uh you know i have songs of mine that have been stuck to the wall we like to say you know like a melody you hear a melody uh sometimes certain melodies you can't even remember it five minutes later yeah. so we say that one didn't stick to the wall you know but if you write a melody that right sticks to the wall yeah then five days later you can remember it, you know. And so I try to write simple melodies that stick to the wall. Uh -huh. And those songs that I did write, they've been with me a long time and they've, I've taken them to different countries and yeah. played with a lot of different musicians. And it sounds like the, we've been working together for years. I wonder what the know? role of music is in terms of the, uh, the larger scenario of human activity. I mean, music yeah. is certainly one of the most important art forms and everything like that. And it's in many dimensions. And uh, uh, what about certain things about it are scientific? Yeah. But other things are definitely not scientific. Uh -huh. So when you go to music school, for instance, 
if you get the right teacher that you have a good simpatico with and they can draw the music out of you that's in your soul, uh -huh. that's where it's at. You, you don't see? think it'd just be something But if they just try to teach you scales and arpeggios, then you're going to sound like every other musician, you know. So the, the thing is that there's certain things that they can teach you and other things that you're going to have to get out of life's experience. Is it a metaphor for life itself, you know, whether or not, wh they're creative. Like there have been some people that are, pre they lived down through the ages, Bach yeah. and Mozart. Mozart was buried in a pauper's grave. Isn't that something? Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or some of the arts. Yeah. You're talking about an art form and everything. Yeah. And people would have, a, uh, you, you can play something and then you get a magic night where it really, you can play it one time or something, but then it gets into a, a, a rare realm where it really gets into something when you get really into the rare. Zone, you know? Yeah, the zone, I yeah, guess they right. call it or something. And then there's quality in terms of consideration. You can never predict when that's going to happen, you know. No. It just has to be the right combination. Is that like life, though? The Is right combination of the atmosphere, yeah. of the people on the stand and around, and it could be the weather or what's happening top of same with you know? painting or same with poetry yeah, or know, thing, uh, things like that. the art forms yeah i think that the creative you, if moments you get your you know? expectations up too much you say this is going to be a great night and you you know you're you only cry, uh, bound yeah. for disappointment at that yeah, point yeah you know? yeah so you have to be a little bit of a skeptic but you're all you know? bummed out and you go and drag yourself down to the club and then all of a sudden you hit the greatest time yeah, ever or sometimes something. It, you, or it, you in general like when they, they right. got a lot of these programs on television now you know where you got uh, somebody they're singing or something uh -huh. and they're just a, a citizen and then they go, like there's a woman who sang a song on a program and she was just absolutely fantastic and everybody is recognizing special quality yeah. of presentation and music and stuff. Is music given over to that kind of thing? That they have moments when you hear the same thing one time but then you well, hear it's really... Well, especially singers, you know. Um, singers, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, for but what about a, just um, music American itself? American Idol TV show. Yeah. People line up for days and they go through thousands of auditions to come up with a handful of singers who can actually sing. Yeah. The one thing about the human voice is it's a very imperfect kind of way of delivering the notes, you mm -hmm. know. So even the best singer can have a lousy night, you know. Yeah. And a lousy singer can have a great night. You does, know? It so it depends, you know? like, uh, does it apply to other things like, does it apply to other things? They, f they, f they find some good talent out there, you know, so you got to hand it to them. They, they, they discovered some really great talent. But in know? physics, you have some people who, uh, who are uh, Einstein. They, they get the theory of relativity. They get this thing in a special place. They find something really synergistically, really Ma magic, you yeah. know, the magic thing. Looks is like we're coming down the pipe. Here. Looks like we're coming down the pipe. <laughs> One of the magic things is we don't have endless time, apparently. Yeah, time that's right. That so, it? yeah, I'm sorry we got off on that, but thank you. So good to see you, John. <laughs> yeah, so good best, to man. see you again. It's so good to see thank you. And thanks a lot. Big thanks honor for to be Josie on your show and, and, um, and the music is so important and everything. It's so good. You're in town for a couple of days or yeah. something now and everything. And I'll be good. back uh, usually. Uh, Every time you turn around, I'm back in. <laughs> Dial C for Channer, not O for O'Malley, like uh, yeah, yeah. Bing Crosby. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, right. Josie Ann. That's it. We'll be coming back again tomorrow. Thanks for viewing. Thank you very much, Harold. Another 10 seconds. Another 10 oh, another seconds. 10. Say something, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Well, Hello! Yeah. Come, uh, come, come see us at the NAMM show. Uh, in January. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We had to fill in 10 seconds. <laughs> of, oh.